because these exercises are going to be high impact, they're also pretty high intensity. And I'd like you to run them by your healthcare pro before you try doing these. In our last video, we talked about low impact, and low impact exercise is with one foot on the ground all the time. High impact means that the feet are going to come off the ground simultaneously at some point, like a little jump or something like that. That would be a high impact move. Uh, one of the things that we talked about in the other video were shoes, and remember, nothing soft like this, nothing too hard like this and high because one of these types of shoes is going to do the work for you and you're not going to get the strength and the flexibility in the ankles and the feet that you really, really want. So, instead of too, too hot, too cold, now we want it just right, not too high, not too hard, we want baby bear, we want the actual athletic shoe, half an inch higher in the back than in the front, remember, check inside and if the shoe that you already have and are comfortable in that's a good lace-up shoe doesn't have enough height in here to keep you forward on your feet, which helps with balance, put a little insole in there. Okay, the power moves, I like to call them that because they have two or more of the things that are real important for people with Parkinson's. Uh, they may include balance, obvious. Uh, extended or expansive moves, getting the arms away from the body or the feet apart. Uh, the ankles and the feet, sometimes flexible, sometimes strong. Almost all of the exercises that we do today are going to be a high impact, which means that they're going to be working those uh, feet and ankles. And if we're doing anything like this, it's really working on the flexibility. Uh, many of the moves are very quick. And really, uh, moving quickly is something that we tend to back off of the older that we get anyway. And with Parkinson's, I think that you already know where we're going with this. You really need to keep practicing quick movements in a controlled situation so that you can continue with those. If you have to run out and grab your grandchild from in front of a, a car that's coming or uh, zip out to grab the grocery cart before it hits your car in the parking lot, you don't want to hurt yourself. You want to be used to doing those quick moves. Uh, sometimes it can include a lateral move, moving sideways, or a backward move. And a backward move always keeps a good muscle balance because so much of our action is this way, which of course works on this muscle, but how much of it is back like this working on this muscle? And muscle balance contributes to better body balance. Um, we do a lot with the tandem, uh, it's cadence, hands and feet moving together. And that often comes with a problem um, with Parkinson's, sometimes a tight movement like this, sometimes like this, and it shortens the arm movement, which shortens the feet. We want to get some things going here so that you are real comfortable when you're doing your walking and keeping the arms moving and pulling yourself forward. And lastly, we like to work on the torso, doing the twisting, doing some stretching, maybe doing some tightening. A lot of these will actually tighten because you're going to be doing things like jumping forward and back, and that naturally just tightens it. But you're going to get some flexibility in there as well. I have eight exercises for you today. I like the first one because it has everything except the tandem movements. And I call it pulling down the tent. And what you're going to do is reach way up, and you're going to grab a heavy tent, and you're going to try and pull it down. Now, those tents are pretty tough, so you're going to have to pull it down strongly, and then you're going to jump up. You're going to pull it down strongly, and then you're going to jump up. We're going to do two more. Pull it down. Jump it up. Grab it. Pull it down. Jump it up. You can tell I mean business when I've got my hair all tied up instead of loose. So you can see that we're going to have some more fun things yet to come. The jumping forward and back is for balance. It's quick. And because it's forward and back, we're getting a little bit of a backward movement in it. But it's real good for the torso as well, that tightening that I was talking about. Your hands are going to be down. And you're just going to jump forward and back using the hands for balance. You only have to jump forward and back about that much, and yet you're still going to get a lot of action. 
do it to the count of eight or the count of ten. An eight count is usually used in aerobic dance. A ten count is usually used in just a standard phys ed type class. So you can do maybe two sets of ten or two sets of eight. The three side hops and up. Step to the side here. We're going to be moving laterally. This is a big lateral uh, move. There's going to be one arm extended away. It's going to be working on the ankles and feet, obviously. And it's kind of quick as well. And I'm going to do it real slow to try and get you so that you're comfortable with this. And it's one, two, three, up with the inside hand. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. Rest. Let's do it again. When you start, I want you to be kind of controlled with it with little steps. But once you get going, let's use a little bit bigger step. And remember, it's going to be the hand on the inside of whenever you get going. So it's one, two, three, up. One, two, three three, up, one, two, three, up, one, two, three, and up. Starting to get a little winded? I am. You can admit it. When we jump rope backwards, I want you to start with your hands low, and then we're going to work our hands up. It's really good as an expansive move with the hands up. Um, obviously with the feet and everything, and it's quick. Uh, what we're going to do is this little business and then a little bit bigger, and that's why I'm calling it quick, is because when the arms are really at the apex there, they're going to be moving pretty fast. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And apparently I need to pull my pants up. Nothing but quality here. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Gotta have a little bit of a bend in the knees when you're doing that. Keep them loose. Keep them loose. I really, really, really... Oh, why were we doing it as a back jump? Because everything is forward with the body. It just seems like everything goes forward. This way, it's giving you that big expansive move. An expansive move. You want to be thinking about pulling away from the central location here. The surprise. I love the surprise. I do this on the track and people aren't real used to me anymore. But once you get to doing this, you're going to start feeling some muscles and it's going to feel real good. And you're going to end up on one foot. The surprise really, really, really works a lot with balance. But it's a huge expansive exercise because it expands the arms as well as the legs. You're going to see, we're going to sort of move laterally and we're going to go, surprise, 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 and four, and three, and two, and one. It's kind of a surprise, isn't it? The feet apart twist. You're going to start with your feet just slightly apart and your hands out. And you're going to twist, twist, twist. See this hand here? It's coming in and the hands are going back as the knees are going in that direction. Twist, twist. But we're going to do it quickly. Here we go, and one, two, three, four. Hold your tummy in when you're doing it. Seven, eight, and relax. Maybe just do two sets of eight or ten on that one. The knees high, one, two, three, four, is going to be very quick. We're going to bring the knees up, and it's going to be kind of taxing, so we're going to take a break every four counts. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and rest. Notice that it's happening every other step. One, two, three, four, 
rest. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and rest. Now, add the hands just a little bit as though it's a natural run. One, two, three, four, and rest. Heart rate going up. Let's do it once more. One, two, three, four, and rest. All right, you only have one left to go. The back kick and push, and what this is going to do is go from foot to foot, pressing backwards with both the hands and the feet at the same time, and we'll be hopping with this, of course, high impact. But notice what happens, we have this line, and remember I was talking about everything coming forward, the legs come forward, the arms go forward, the head comes forward. What we're doing is going beyond the center point with both the hands and feet at the same time. So, let's do this. Every other foot goes back. I'm going to count it now. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and rest. We'll do one more set. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. We have a video that is called PD Power Moves Low Impact keeping one foot on the ground. Look for that one if this one's too difficult for you. Too much intensity, perhaps. And there's going to be one other one, and we're going to be using support. It's going to do the same thing with two or more specific things for Parkinson's in each move. So be looking for PD power moves using support. And visit me on Facebook anytime. On Facebook, I'm going to have a list of all of these exercises, just click open PD Power Moves High Impact and you're going to find them listed and then you can copy them and it'll tell you really what you're working on, whether it's balance, quick movement, and so forth that's listed with them. Have a good time, work it into your standard workout, work it into your walk, or just do it in front of the TV set so you've got the TV here and you've got me there, just kind of poking you on.